Hello, this is Worldwide Geography, a channel all about geography. In 2021, the ambitious crown prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, announced a crazy plan for the Saudi government, which was to build a linear and vertical city in the desert that is 170 kilometers long, 200 meters wide, and 500 meters high. If the numbers don't seem crazy enough, think of it as 1,300 type by 101 buildings being lined up and knocked through. It's like a modern great wall standing along the Red Sea coast. This city is said to have no roads or cars. It'll run entirely on clean energy and have a high-speed railway of up to 500 kilometers per hour. It's expected to accommodate as many as 9 million people. How did they come up with something crazy like this? Is it really workable, or is it just something Saudi Arabia made up to make them visible to the rest of the world? The History of Urban Development in fact, the vertical city concept is nothing new and nor is the linear city concept. As early as the late 19th century, some Spanish engineers proposed the linear city concept, arguing that the city should develop along a transportation axis, preferably a railway that keeps on extending and with blocks of about 500 meters wide along it. Therefore, people can enjoy both the convenient urban life in the city and the natural environment that is within easy reach. In the early 20th century, an architect named Le Corbusier also gave his opinions on the increasingly high density of urban development. He believed urban development should take the opposite approach. It should increase the urban center's living density by constructing high-rise buildings with more than 60 floors. This way, the urban living space would develop vertically, relieve the overcrowded situation in the city center, and return the city's ground to green space. Although both vertical and linear cities aren't new, Saudi Arabia was the first to make this radical combination of the two concepts and even intended to put them into practice. Saudi Arabia's 2030 vision. There was actually something crazier than the linear city plan in Saudi Arabia's 2030 vision. Crown Prince Salman first proposed the Saudi government's 2030 vision in 2016. Economically, he expected to reduce Saudi Arabia's high dependence on oil by developing other industries like tourism and technology through various investment plans. In the 2030 vision, there are a series of new town plans, collectively known as NEOM, which means a new futuristic city. It is expected to create a vast new township area of about 26,000 square kilometers in northwestern Saudi Arabia, on the Red Sea coast near the border with Egypt and Jordan. The NEOM plan consists of three main projects. The first one is Oxygen, an automated industrial port city in a regular octagon shape floating on the sea. The second one is Trojina, a complex resort that will be open all year on a 2,000 meter mountain. It will also be Saudi Arabia's first major outdoor ski resort. The last one is The Line, a vertical linear city extending 170 kilometers inland from the Red Sea coast which is also the topic of this video. The Crazy Project of the Line The construction plans of the line were initially revealed in 2021. This plan is expected to build two parallel high-rise buildings with a length of 170 kilometers and a height of 500 meters. The two buildings are like two walls starting from the Red Sea coast and going through the desert and mountains in Saudi Arabia. The buildings will contain everything people need, including residences, schools, offices, and hospitals. It'll also be enough to accommodate 9 million people. There will be a 100-meter gap between the two buildings, and that gap will be used to build the railways, sidewalks, and green spaces needed in the city. The railways and sidewalks will also be separated without interfering with each other. The outer facades of the two buildings are expected to be in mirror glass, so that people can see the endless desert reflection by looking at the modern Great Wall. Due to the special architectural form of the line, the city will only cover an area of 34 square kilometers. People will be able to enjoy the layered green spaces in the city and the natural landscapes like deserts and coasts near it. According to Saudi officials, as much as 95% of the city's planned area will be set aside as nature reserves because the vertical city will only cover a very small area. In addition, a high-speed railway will be built inside the city to travel 170 kilometers from one end of the line to the other in just 20 minutes, equivalent to more than 500 kilometers per hour. 
This kind of design is almost a perfect realization of the linear city concept of more than 100 years ago, only it has become more modern and extreme. If that doesn't sound so crazy, you might change your mind by learning that there are only 11 skyscrapers in the world that are taller than 500 meters. No, not just one, it's two buildings like that. We can only imagine the manpower, materials, money, and time needed for this construction. No wonder the Saudi officials called it the new wonder for the world. According to Saudi officials, the line will create 380,000 jobs in Saudi Arabia and add 48 billion US dollars to the country's GDP. However, the whole plan of the line will cost 500 billion to 1 trillion US dollars. No one knows how they'll pay such a large amount of money. The Saudi government also stated that the line is a city with no cars and carbon emissions. All the daily facilities will be built within a five-minute walk from their homes. However, the Saudi government hasn't made it clear how to design a city like that. They only claim that the line will run on 100% renewable energy with zero carbon emissions, but never mention the energy consumption during the construction of such a huge building. Philip Oldfield, Dean of the School of Architecture and Environment at the University of New South Wales in Australia, believed that the construction of the line would require a high amount of steel, glass, and concrete, and it was estimated that it would produce as much as 1.8 billion tons of carbon dioxide emissions, more than four years of emissions from the entire UK. Moreover, the planned area for an NEOM war, the line wasn't uninhabited. Tribes and indigenous people had settled there for hundreds of years before the big plan was announced. It was estimated that at least 20,000 people would have to be displaced from their homes to make place for the construction of NEOM. This gigantic development plan has certainly caused protests, with at least one protester shot dead by Saudi security forces. In the years since Crown Prince Salman came to power, the line should be his most ambitious attempt to change the world's view on Saudi Arabia from an oil-rich country to a thriving regional power with opportunities. Although this project is unbelievably large, aerial footage released in late 2022 shows that excavation works have already begun in parts of the planned area of the line. In September 2022, it was reported that China State Construction Group, Spain Construction Group, and a Saudi Arabian contracting company named SAJCO had jointly won the bid for the line's leading engineering project, including a high-speed passenger railway tunnel and a parallel heavy haul railway tunnel with about 16 kilometers. The total contract value was about 2.5 billion US dollars. However, in its replies to the media, China State Construction Group said that they only signed an intentional agreement with the Saudi government and the total contract value wasn't as high as the news claimed. The truth and details of the whole plan are still unclear to the rest of the world. Is it really possible to build the unbelievable modern Great Wall? Or is it just a modern wonder that only exists in 3D modeling and promotional videos? Even if it were to be achieved with the cooperation of companies from various countries, it's still doubtful if anyone would actually want to live in such a highly advanced city. Given that it's such a large construction, it may take decades before we have the answers to many of these doubts and questions. All right, that's all for this video on worldwide geography. If you're interested in this topic, please comment and share your views. If you like our channel, please subscribe, like, and share. See you in the next video. Bye.